Hi, so to a degree, this is actually a little more than an advertisement for this stuff. This is the conductive ink, but it is pretty cool and pretty fun. Now, this stuff is, uh, to my mind, amazing stuff. And I often get asked, what can you do with it? And one thing I thought to do with it was paint a television aerial. Now, I went out and bought this thing, which is a store-bought aerial, and that cost me £30. I'm in the UK, incidentally, it's about $45. And that's got a built-in amplifier to it. And I test all these aerials against that. Now then what I did was uh, make up a whole load of different aerials. Uh, this is a really simple one which is just on a bit of paper with that aerial design on it. And that's a large version. And then I scanned the internet and came up with lots of aerial designs. This was called um, the Super HD TV Aerial, the best aerial you'll ever need. And it's constructed from these two conic sections raised above a reflector plate. This has been painted with the ink and these have been painted with the ink. Uh, you can find that on the internet actually and we test that one as well. The next one that I looked at was this one which I call the Kip K and I'll go through how to build um, this one. They're all built pretty much exactly the same way uh, and that was the Kip K aerial that was uh, used. Uh, I also came across another one which is a, a design that they were selling for uh, $40. It was piece of copper tape on a piece of see-through plastic and it looks just like that so I cut a piece of this foam board out and painted it with the wall tenor design and tested that one and then I tested this one now the reason I took a little bit of a time to say and then I tested with this one is because this really small simple design actually worked best now it's actually painted on something called foam board which is a piece of two bits of cardboard with a bit of foam in between and I just painted that design onto that little bit of foam board. And you can see how big it is. It's about um, 22 centimetres by about 12 centimetres, something like that. And I just painted that design and there's the angles here at about um, 50 degrees. And that worked really, really well. I mean, amazing. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to build the Kip K because they're all built pretty much the same way. Now all our aerials are made on this stuff which is foam board and foam board is really easy to get hold of but you don't have to use foam board, you can use cardboard, you can use paper, you can use plastic, um, you could probably even put it directly on the wall. So there's a whole range of things that you can use but because we're using designs that are essentially internet based then what we're going to end up with is a load of patterns like this and what we have to do is transfer those patterns onto the foam board. Now this one is the Kip K. Um, aerial and it ends up looking like this. In order to get that on there what you do is take a piece of your foam board that is basically um, 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters it only has to be as big as will fit the Kip K antenna and I've drawn a center line down the center of the foam board. Then all I need to do is line up the center of my Kip K pattern with the center line and then transfer it. Now this is a technique that's used very often in dressmaking and it's called pin transfer. You take a pin and you hold down your piece and at each point that you need to join up you just stab the pin through and that will transfer the pattern from your piece of paper onto your bit of foam board and you keep on doing that until you've hit every point. Then when you've done that what you end up is with a board with lots of pinholes in it. And all you have to do then is take your pencil and your ruler and join those pinholes up together. If you've done that, you'll end up with your drawing transferred. Now, pin transfer is a great way of transferring angular drawings. So it's a great way for transferring all of these antenna designs onto a bit of foam board. Now, in order to uh, paint the actual aerial, all you do is literally take the normal conductive ink. And remember, this ink, although um, very good, does need a good shake or a good stir before use because it settles over time. So give it a good shake, good stir, take the lid off, and you'll have a brush. You choose the brush more or less the same width as the lines that you want to draw because it makes it quicker. You can use a smaller brush if you like, or you can use a uh, brush, like I say, with the same thickness of the lines. Apply your ink and just draw a line with it. So when you're finished, what you'll end up is two boards like that. And you just set them somewhere to dry, and then when they have a chance to dry, you give them another coat. Now, all of the aerials are going to be made in exactly the same way. That is, you choose your material, you choose your design or design your design, transfer it onto your material using pin transfer, draw it out, and then overpaint it two or three times with the conductive ink. So when you finish painting these two sides, uh, two coats, then you pop it down, put three lines of glue on, 
press it down at this angle, this angle is about 50 degrees, two lines of glue, press it on there and let it set and that finishes your Kip K aerial, Kip K antenna. So the last thing that you're going to need to do is connect all of those antennas up to your stand television coax cable and in order to do that you need this thing. This is called a balen. It's a toroid that's round and wired up and two wires go into there and that connects into your coax. In order to connect the wires, all I've actually done is taken a paper clip, stripped off a bit of wire and twisted the wire around the paper clip to make a connection. So not the most brilliant of connections. Uh, and that is how I connected all those aerials up. So um, we're back at home in my study in fact because I've got a television license uh, for this particular house and I don't have one for the lab. So I brought everything home and what I've got here is a TV. It's a slightly older television so it doesn't receive digital signals. So there's a digibox just down there to convert the digital into analogue and the end of my coax cable. And what I'm going to do is plug the different aerials in and demonstrate them to you. This one is a store-bought HD digital antenna apparently with integrated amplifier. This particular thing cost me £30 which is about $45 and if I hold it in the transmission direction here we are using this particular antenna and as you can see it's omnidirectional the quality of the picture is actually very dependent on direction oddly enough not so much on height I can hold it really quite low and still get a pretty reasonable picture response from it but if I move it out of the direction then the picture degrades So how about that? This conductive ink can be used to paint antennas. Now I live in the UK so I was able to get 93 channels out of my, um, it's actually a biconical antenna but let's call it a butterfly antenna. Out of my roughly made butterfly antenna I could get 93 pretty good channels. <laughs> so probably cost about, I don't know, 50 pence, something like that and probably performs as well as something that would cost you $50, $70. <laughs> anyway, I just find that ludicrous. So the paint performs really, really well to paint antennas. And this really small antenna was just fine for receiving my HDTV. So I hope that was of interest to you. And thank you very much for watching.